In this video, I plan the slam. <laughs> we look at the modifications I want to do to the front suspension and the rear suspension to lower the truck. And we consider the implications of my planned actions. Coming right up. So what can I do out here in the forest <laughs> without access to any aftermarket parts to drop this back suspension? Currently the axle is sitting below the spring. But if I put the axle on top of the spring, what's going to happen? I'm going to drop the truck by quite a, quite a lot. How much will it be if I measure from the bottom of the axle? To the top of the springs, I seem to get about 145 millimeters. That's close to six inches. So what am I, what's going to happen? If I put the axle or the duff then on top of the leaf spring, the back end of the truck will go down by nearly six inches. There's one problem though, if you can imagine the axle sitting here, it's going to catch here going to be very close. So I don't have this travel space anymore. So I'm going to have to notch the chassis here, put in like a half section to allow the axle some room for traveling as the suspension works. So it's going to have to mean that I cut this out, put in reinforcing, come up some plates and stuff to keep the integrity of the chassis. I think what's nice about doing this is that I'm not messing with springs or shackle lengths. Um, messing with shackle lengths can make a radical difference to how your suspension reacts and works. So that will all remain the way it was, the way it was designed originally. I'm just going to relocate the axle position. And the axle on top of leaf springs is a common see a thing you see it in many cars. So yes, I think it's going to work very well. One thing I must look at when I do this is the angle of the differential in relation to the prop shaft when I relocate and change things. But as we get into this modification, we'll talk about that. Okay, yes, another view. Other side with the wheel still on. So the axle or the differential is going to sit on top of the leaf spring. You can simulate it with this piece of pipe. <laughs> so it's going to basically be something like that. So yes, it actually does fit in through her, but minimal clearance here, which is not good enough, which is why we need to create space. The, the other thing that will change is obviously the shock length, because now the shock will be attached at this point, so the shock will be much shorter. Um, the shock angle will change a little bit as well. This angle will move slightly towards there. So yes, we must just look at what the situation is going to be here. Uh, maybe the original shocks might not work anymore. We'll see when we get there. Cool. Another angle. So with my simulated... <laughs> That's going to be now the new position of the differential, that a side axle, side tube, what do you call it, sitting on top of the spring. Um, yeah, create space for travel. Some people will say you are only going to drop it by the diameter of this tube. But they are not wearing their thinking caps properly. <laughs> if you think about it, this point is going to move to there. Because it's going to sit on top of the leaf springs. 
So the actual change will be the diameter of this tube plus the height of the spring perch, this metal bit here, plus the thickness of the leaves. You know what, when I looked at this previous video clip, I realized <laughs> I wasn't using my brains properly and I was actually talking nonsense. So I made a drawing to clarify this business for myself. Let me explain my drawing. This is the tube through which the side shaft comes from the differential in section. This is the spring perch. That's the bracket welded onto the tube on which the spring rests. And here is my leaf springs. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want to essentially, don't you agree? do that. So what is the change? Because I'm now moving the center of the side shaft to that position. How much is it moving? Half a diameter of the tube, the thickness of the perch, the thickness of the spring, the thickness of the perch again, and another half diameter. If we add all of this together and write it as a formula, the total is the diameter of the tube plus two times the thickness of the perch plus the thickness of the spring. I measured these components quite accurately here. The diameter of the tube is 83 millimeters. The thickness of the existing spring perch is 12 millimeters. The thickness of the springs combined is 47 millimeters. Let me enter it into my formula. 83 for the diameter, 12 millimeter millimeters for the perch thickness times two plus 47 millimeters for the thickness of the springs, add it all together and I get 154 millimeters. That's actually by how much the back end of the truck will drop when I do this modification. Yes, maybe I'm splitting ball hairs, <laughs> but this is correct. So at least we know the exact implication. So we have a plan for the back. That will drop us nearly six inches. But what about the front? Um, we need to do something here as well. Otherwise we're going to be sitting with this truck with its ass on the floor and its nose in the sky. <laughs> so about the only thing we can do here is to play with the coil spring here. Um, one thing to keep in mind currently is a lot of weight off of the front springs. The engine is out, the transmission is out, all the front bodywork is gone. Um, yes. So what I'm planning to do is to cut the coil spring. There's going to be several implications, so we need to keep that in mind. Number one, if I shorten the coil spring, I will definitely drop. But because the spring is shorter, there's less spring material, so the front suspension will become stiffer. Unless I get a new spring made, there's not much I can do about it. The other implication is the business of Camber. You can probably see that currently we've got the wheels kind of standing in. Positive camber makes sense because of all the weight, the engine and the transmission that's out of the car at the moment. If I shorten the spring because of how the front suspension works on these trucks, the wheel will start doing that. <laughs> 
Um, this old Ford F100 has got a very interesting front twin beam suspension. Let me see if I can explain how it works. So you'll see, here's one long bar, a fixed point attachment right here, and at the other end of this bar is the wheel attached. So as the suspension moves up and down, this bar will move here, it swivels around this point here. So this wheel is on this beam. We've got the same for the other wheel. Here is its beam. I don't know if you can see going behind this one. A fixed point attachment is here. And again, when the suspension works, this bar swirls around this fixed point over here and moves up and down. Um, Yes, I think I'm going to build a quick model so we can all just understand exactly how this business works. <laughs> okay, so here's my model. That represents the tire, there's the beam, there's the one swivel point. There's the other tire attached to the beam and its swivel point. So my model is not to scale, it's not geometrically 100% correct, but it doesn't matter because it will serve to illustrate the point. There's Mother Earth. <laughs> so the standard suspension travel scenario would then be around that point. You see what happens here as the suspension moves the camber of the tire changes and that's what we are interested in that is the standard ride height on the original truck and you can see that the camber that green line is pretty much zero original ride, ride height if I take the engine out and the transmission and I reduce the weight bearing on the springs what's going to happen? basically that and that's what the truck is looking like at the moment. So now I've got camber here and here because I've reduced the weight sitting on the springs. Positive camber represented by that blue line there. Let's look at the typical suspension movement again then. It's, can you see it's through an arc around that swivel point? And as it changes, the camber of the tire changes. So typical ride height there somewhere, bump, down, you can see what happens to the camber. Standard ride height, driving down the road, you hit a bump with the one wheel only, that happens. Driving down the road and you go over a speed bump, that happens. <laughs> What's going to happen if I cut the spring shorter? It's going to drop. So the effect will be something like this. Can you see what has happened to the camper? Now I've got negative camber represented by the red line. So the amount of camber that I get or camber change then is going to depend on how much shorter I make the springs. I can correct this camber after the fact by bending this beam. If I bend this beat the beam here and bend it somewhere there, the camber will improve. That's quite a mission. It would need to mean stripping it out completely and bending the two exactly the same. That should be quite challenging. It's doable. I don't want to go yet there necessarily, so I'm going to experiment and make a call on how much I want to cut from the springs, drop the car and see what it looks like in the very end with all the weight in and then re-evaluate. <laughs> so, so the challenge now is to decide how much to cut the springs. What will happen if I've dropped the truck and this is the stance. I've got quite a bit of 
the negative gamma. The first big thing, of course, would be wear and tear on the tire, say. I would wear the tire on the inside much quicker. There will be other impacts or effects, all to do with steering geometry, suspension geometry, but yeah, let's not go there. <laughs> I think so. In the, in the end, let's just know that we do not want too much negative camber. Um, it might just create too much problem. If I cut too much off of the spring, I'm going to have even more camber. And I'm going to have a stiffer ride because I'm shortening the spring. So yeah, to make a decision on how much to take off, that's quite a challenge, for me anyway. <laughs> cool, I hope it makes sense to everybody. I understand it much better now. Okay, cool, so yeah, I've measured in the back that uh, if I put the differential on top of the leaf springs, I'm going to get a change in ride height of 145 mil, about 6 inches. So at least in theory, I should cut the spring down with the same amount, which would mean, roughly measuring from that there, I need to cut the spring around here somewhere. But, wow, that means I'm reducing the spring length radically, which is going to make the suspension a whole lot stiffer. Um, I'm not comfortable with taking off that much. I don't think that's what I'm going to do. It's relatively easy to take the spring out. So just applying my <laughs> bush mechanic common sense. Hey, remember I'm no automotive engineer or anything. I'm going to take off less initially and see where we end up. Um, if I end up with the ass down a little bit, I can always cut off a bit more. Or just stick with that ass down <laughs> stance. You, you do get some trucks that look like that. Um, I think they've got a name for it in the States. Is it called the Carolina Squat or something like that? So yes, um, I think, I don't know. Um, Maybe a coil or a coil and a half. I'm just scared that if I cut too much of it, the light becomes too stiff. Okay, let's look at the spring a little bit closer. Let me make a mark here. Yeah. Yeah. Bloody stupid thing doesn't want to work. These paint markers never work for me. No, can't see that. Okay, I think I found one that works better. All right, there's a mark. And if I go one coil down, obviously, same point. So if I cut one coil out, I'm going to get that much of a change, which measures as in millimeters, a little bit more than 40 mil, in inches, almost one and three quarter, tad less. So I cut out one coil, I will drop by 40 millimeters, way less than the back. So if I cut out one coil, that's about 40 millimeters. If I cut out one coil and a half, that would be roughly 60 millimeters. Yeah, way less than what I have in the back. Remember, we measured about 145. Um, but I just can't see that I can possibly shorten the spring by that much. It's going to come down to here somewhere. Sure, from there. Lever is very short but left. Incredibly stiff. And I might be missing something as well. I'm going to stick with a coil and a half for now. And then we see what we get. So yes, the so next step would be to take the spring out. Then we can also look at it a bit better. 
Okay, Oaks, my game plan has been drafted. Um, in the next video, I'm actually going to start doing some work. Um, to slam this truck <laughs> should be fun. Um, listen, thanks very much for watching. Appreciate it. Um, remember, subscription is free, eh? All you older, older gentlemen, you don't have to pay, it's free. <laughs> um, and listen, if you think and feel that you've found some value in my channel, I really would appreciate it if you subscribe. It will mean a lot to me. And you're welcome to comment, tell me what I'm doing wrong. <laughs> All right, um, I'm happy to engage in conversation. Thanks for watching. I see you in the next one. Cool.